my name's Graham Parker and welcome to the Hoof GP YouTube channel. Today we're talking about mean, evil dairy farmers and why they lock their cows up in sheds all day. That's my line. New waterproofs. Life is good. First job of the day, get some of these cows in, get their feet trimmed and looking sexy. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. So today we've got about 26 or 27 of these cows to trim. This is one of my favorite farms. It's the Farm and Files farm. And if you guys haven't already checked out the Farm and Files YouTube channel, type it in farming files and go and check out their content. It's a couple of kids doing an awesome, awesome job of showing off their farm and what it's all about. So today we're talking about dairy farmers and why they tend to keep their cows inside all year round and why that may seem like an absolutely terrible thing to a lot of people, but actually why it can be kinder to the cows in some respects and why they really do it. And we're also at Kerry One Two's farm, so we're gonna take a look at her. But first, let's take care of the cow that's in the crush because she has a surprise in store for us. we're persevering with the roto clip and a few awesome trimmers like Jamie Sullivan, Willie Coyne and others that I can't think of right now told me how to modify this disc so that is something that we will be doing in this coming week and I'll show you exactly how to do it for now though we're persevering Silent treatment is just what it feels like cracks in the edge of this horn they need to be removed if they're not removed they're going to continue to crack all the way up that white line and cause a proper problem maybe it's already causing a problem let's see you see this is exactly why we investigate these cracks it's looking like this could actually be a problem. I didn't see her walk in, so I don't know if she was lame or not. One thing I do know is we need to investigate that and completely get rid of that crack because it looks like it could form an abscess or something higher up the wall. Now that I can see that there is some sort of sole separation here, I'm looking around the heel to make sure there's no cracks. And actually, there's one right there. See, so this is going to be a double sole. That is going to connect up with here. So I know now I can remove all of this horn safely. And you see how this part of the horn is darker and this comes to a sudden stop. That lets me know that this is disconnected. So actually I can peel all of this away without cutting into any flesh.
So I launched channel memberships the other day and I've never ever been even half as nervous about uploading a video as I was with that one. And I just want to say thank you, not just thank you to everybody who joined, because loads of people signed up as members, but thank you to everybody for not totally slaying me in the comments. And by the way, I really do read every single comment. I don't reply and I don't love and I don't like every comment, but I do read every single comment. So if you've got anything to say to my face, do it now in the comments. Go on, I dare you. Just not anybody that knows me personally because then I'll feel really bad about it. Probably cry. Okay, so we've got this block on here because we need to relieve the weight from this claw because now we've made this horn so thin that if we let her walk away like that, she would be in extreme pain. And we need to make and we need to make sure that she is not in any pain whatsoever, or at least in as little pain as possible. Like I said before, I didn't see her walking in, but she is almost certainly lame because of that problem. And my job is to fix it. Well, actually, my main job is to prevent it, but preventing white lines is nearly impossible. So I just need to tidy this up by getting rid of this little raggedy horn here, 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 and reduce this a little bit. And then I'm gonna dress it. I tell you guys this all the time, so you're probably sick of hearing it, but this is 10% iodine. This is what we can buy in the UK. I think you can only buy 5% in the States. We can buy 10. The reason I use iodine is because during the Second World War, instead of dressings and things like that that weren't available on the front line, they would use iodine. And what it did was it completely dehydrated the outer layers of flesh, which basically means it kind of killed off those outer skin tissue areas. And in doing that, it forms a protective barrier of dehydrated skin. And that's what I want to happen here. I want a protective barrier. I want all of the bacteria to be killed and this will kill that nasty bacteria. And I want the lesion to be protected by that in this sort of nice, safe and clean environment. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> Next clip. At this farm, we tend to bring down like five or six cows at a time because it fits in the race nicely. And that means they're not too bunched up. Come on girls, come on. We actually got through these cows with no problems whatsoever, so I didn't bother filming anything. So we then went and got Gracie out of her bed and into the crush. For those of you who aren't familiar with Gracie though, just do a quick search for cow 812 and have a look at her backstory. It really is worth a watch. So as you can see, this back right foot is pretty much perfect. So we're not going to interfere with anything because it's all doing really well. We're just going to model this part out to make sure she doesn't get a sole ulcer and that won't thin out her soles in the slightest little bit. You see, so poor old Gracie here was starting to get a bit of bruising in there where this typical sole ulcer site would be. We've modelled it out and that's not going to be a problem now. And these pretty much completely healed. Next foot, which unfortunately isn't quite so good. Okay, so this little bit of loose horn has come away to nothing. That could have really started working its way right up there and produced a proper problem for Gracie. As it is, it hasn't. And we're gonna fill that in with glue, make sure it's all nice and smooth, they're completely filling in that void, as well as putting a block on top of it. Now, it's really important to make sure that this is, there's no sharp projections into the foot because they would actually start to hurt her. So we're gonna smooth that out a little bit more, glue this up, put a block on, and then work on this outer claw. As you can see, Gracie's foot is actually weeping blood and we've not touched it. So that means that the horn is not growing and it's not completely sealing off that problem. And I'm starting to think maybe the corium, so the part that actually grows the horn, has been so insulted. Seriously, Gracie? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was about to say the corium has been insulted, but Graham has just been insulted as well. That's what you call timing. So as I was saying, I'm starting to worry the corium has been insulted so much 
that actually its horn producing capabilities have diminished. In other words, she can't grow good horn here anymore. So we're going to work away at it and we're still going to persevere obviously because she is going to be much more comfortable with this block on. By the way, there's actually a book out now called Saving Gracie, which is a fantastic book. The pictures in it are absolutely phenomenal. Well, I think they are anyway. The person who made the book, who painted the pictures and wrote the story, I know really well and I would love her to get a few sales from it because the book is fantastic so it's well worth buying and the link for that book is in the description just below this video and it's available worldwide so go get it, it's called Saving Gracie. So there are definitely positives and negatives. Her other foot is pretty much completely healed, but that back left one is really, really struggling. She's looking better on it. I really, really hope that she looks completely better at some stage because we've really put a lot of effort into her. But she is worth it, isn't she? Come on, lass. Come on. Good girl. On you go. On you go. I think my brother maybe got me this mug. I feel extremely lucky to be able to live here in southwest Scotland. To me, the land is beautiful, it's lush, green and full of life. But the reason it's that way is because of our climate and because of the way the land lies. We have lots of hills, valleys, glens, mountains and streams and because of all those different things and because where we're located in the world the climate is apt to change very very quickly indeed. Many dairy farmers here choose to keep their animals housed in sheds all year round, 365 days of the year and I want to take a quick look at exactly why that is. Is it best for the cow? Is it best for the farmer? Do they care? Why do they care? And what is the truth behind it? You see, cows began to become domesticated around 10,000 years ago. People in India and Europe basically started farming them, exactly like we do today, without the sheds, tractors and machinery that we have. They use sticks and caves and that kind of thing. They originated from wild aurochs. They were huge, huge cattle, massive horns, extremely powerful, and did resemble today's cows, but to the extreme, if you like, and obviously, they weren't as easily handled because they were wild aurochs. Before cows were domesticated, they would roam the wilds and they weren't under any sort of pressures that today's cows are. And that meant that they could just kind of live as they pleased. Life was easy. When we farm cows, we need to think of the cow's health and we need to make sure that the cows are as happy as possible, to be as profitable as possible and to yield the biggest amount of produce possible. That might sound harsh, but it's the reality of life. If people didn't produce good quantities of milk and meat, then they wouldn't be good farmers. They wouldn't be making money, would they? And for the cows, that means that they need to be as healthy and happy as possible. The trouble is, we live in Southwest Scotland, and in Southwest Scotland, we can get all four seasons in one day. Right now, it's sunny outside. I'm telling you, it could be snowing in 10 minutes. Okay, so obviously I'm exaggerating but it's, it is sunny outside right now and it could be a torrential downpour in 10 minutes time. People do keep these cows outside all year round sometimes and when it's wet and windy and wild, you'll see the cows gathering at the gates because they're desperately wanting to get back into the sheds because they really, really don't like it. These cows, dairy cows, originated from Holland about 2000 years ago and because they're so good at producing milk and not meat, it means that they are naturally much, much leaner. So they don't have a good covering of fat or thick hair like a Belty Galloway does, for instance. So these cows really can't deal with extreme changes in temperature. That's why this shed that I'm in right now has airflow walls. Those walls actually go up and down according to the temperature and keep these cows at the perfect temperature. The trade-off is that yes, you get a healthy and a happy cow, but you need to do an awful lot of things to make sure that those cows stay extremely healthy and extremely happy. One of which 
is we need to manufacture wear. You see, these cows in the wild or on the prairies or out on the open grassland would be walking miles and miles every day, which would help to wear down their feet. Obviously, they don't walk that far when they're inside. So my job is to manufacture wear. In other words, I need to trim back the loose horn or the dead horn or the horn that is overburdening one of the two claws to make sure that the weight distribution between the two claws is the same. So yes, a lot of farmers do keep their dairy cattle inside 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But can you imagine how much easier it would be for the farmer, not to mention cheaper, if they could just keep the cows outside on the open plains all the time. But it would be immensely cheaper, it would be far easier, and yes, you might think it would be far healthier for the cow. If it was healthier for the cow, it would also be cheaper, which would mean the farmer would make a greater profit. So why doesn't he do it? Like I just said, because our climate changes so rapidly, it means that Scotland is an extremely beautiful place, but it also means we get a huge amount of rain and wind, and these cows cannot cope with it. Neither could the land. If we put these cows out on the fields, they would become bogged down, extremely muddy. They would become full of slurry. The cows would wither because there wouldn't be enough grass. And all of these complex things would come into play. And at the end of the day, the cow would not be as healthy as they are today, especially in this nice farm. So these evil farmers keeping their cows in all day long, every day. Cows are social creatures. The main thing they look for is companionship. If you let a cow out of this shed, the first thing she'll do is run round and round this shed trying to get back in. Believe it or not, that is true. It's happened to me many, many times. I love seeing cows out in the fields, but it really, really wouldn't make that much sense to have these cows out in the fields all year round. A lot of the time things are done because they seem more politically correct. But actually, in this case, it might seem nicer for the cows but it's a much more stable environment for them to be housed in sheds like this. They are fed the absolute best combination of food possible for them. They're checked by the vet once a week, every single week. I come in every two weeks and make sure that their feet are in tip top condition. There are all sorts of systems in place on farms like this, from cushioned beds like this, to air float walls like that, ducts in the ceiling, all these lights in the ceiling to make sure that the cows are as happy as possible. And there is definitely a financial motivation for the farmer in all of this. I'm not denying that, but luckily for us and luckily for the cows, that financial motivation completely aligns with the health of the cow. What is healthiest for the cow is also healthiest for the farmer's wallet. So I'm happy on that front and so are these cows. So as always, we like to make it a real team effort when we wash up because we're a team and we need to get things done properly, quickly and efficiently. So we're both gonna get this thing washed up as quick as possible. <laughs> On that note, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.